G'day everyone. Welcome to Australia Traveller. You ready boys? You're up for it? We are in Victoria. We are in a town called Sale. We travelled last night on the Princess Highway through Orbost and stayed at Lake Entrance. Stayed overnight at the North Arm Tourist Park and we paid $138, which is quite reasonable. We got up early this morning and it is four degrees this morning here in Sale. A bit chilly. So we're just having a look around the town. We'll show you some of that. This is sort of the main street area, main highway area. It's the A1, Princess Highway. And you have businesses it's quite a large center McDonald's up on the right of course and Hungry Jack's on the left are never far away so we just passed KFC not far back on the left as well they always seem to be in the, the same vicinity and um, we just picked up a cup of tea at um, McDonald's and now we'll just drive around the block let you have a bit of a look Heading into the main centre of Sale. Sale spelled S A L E. There's a population of just over 15,000. Not much happening this morning because it's so early and most businesses haven't even opened up yet. Plenty of fog around, as you can see. Beautiful trees this time of year. It's May, early May. Sale is named after General Sir Robert Sale, a British army officer who fought in the First Afghan War. He was killed in battle later in India in 1845. SBS made a TV documentary called Afghanistan the Great Game, which references Sir Robert Sale. Beautiful autumn morning. Foggy and crisp. Very pleasant. Sail so has a RAF base, which is the Royal Australian Air Force. So we're going to head out and have a look. Yeah, we'll show you what an operational Australian Air Force base looks like. In 1991, a Boeing 707 of the number 33 squadron crossed into the sea 43 kilometres or 27 miles south of the base. It was on a training flight and it stalled after an asymmetric flight condition was mishandled. All five of the aircrew perished in the accident. RAF Base e 
remains Australia's primary training base and has been operating continuously since 1943. It's just stunning this morning with the fog and the birds. Lotus PC. aircraft used by the famous roulettes. This year, in the year 2024, the number two flying training school started operating out of ESAIL. Interesting fact, during the 2019 and 2020 Australian bushfire season, the base was used to assist firefighting and relief operations. Many aircraft were deployed, including Australian Army Black Hawks, Taipan and Chinooks, Royal Singapore Air Force Chinooks, New Zealand NH-90 helicopters and the RAF C-27 Spartans. The base houses approximately 700 personnel. Windjill, an Aboriginal word meaning young eagle. This is the squadron that I talked about earlier that helped out in the bushfires. In 2008, the officer training course was transferred here from Point Cook. The Mackie was retired from flying in 2001. Unfortunately, we can't get into the base due to security, but there's the uh, port of sale that we'll go and have a look at now.
port of sale. Not far from here is the Sail Swing Bridge over the Latrobe River. It's the only one left in the world and swings around 360 degrees and featured in the movie The Tender Hook. Sail became a town in 1924 and a city in 1950. It's a um, pretty unique looking building, some modern additions, so that's pretty much all there is for sale. Still early morning as you can see, still lots of fog around. We're going to head out now um, and we're going to head over to the next town on our way to the Great Ocean Road of Victoria. So stay tuned. We'll head that way now. Just show you the rest of the sail on the way out. We'll see you shortly. Fire station. We are heading to Yarram on the Wilsons Promontory Road. A little bit of a detour because we haven't been down this way before. We will be swinging back to Maui and heading across to Melbourne. I'm going to read you an article that I found on the web from the Australian Handbook in 1903 that describes the progress of Yarram. And it states, Yarram, Yarram, a post town with a telegraph, money order office and savings bank. Shire of Alberton, Electoral District, Gippsland South, the police district of Sale, situated on the Tara Tara Creek, 136 miles southeast of Melbourne. Communication is by coach to sail tri-weekly at 15 shillings. Coaches also run to the Alberton Railway Station three and a half miles distant. The Mechanics Institute has a free library of 700 volumes and the banks with Victoria and the Australasia. Shire Hall and Receipt and Pay Office. There are Anglican, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic and Wesleyan churches. 
commercial and Yarram hotels, Masonic and Recubite lodges, and a state school. It is a pastoral district and Yarram is the cattle market for the whole of South Gippsland. Dairying is now largely carried on. Butteries and creameries have been established and a large trade has been done. Flax has been grown. Coal and valuable clays are found within a few miles of the township. Gold and tin are also found, but the country is undeveloped. Yarram District is a beautiful valley, slightly elevated above sea level, bounded north and west by an amphitheatre of mountains at 2,000 feet high, and the climate is very salubrious the influence of the hot winds not being felt. The town is lighted with acetylene gas and kerosene lamps and has a population of 400 people. The newspapers are the Gippsland Standard, which is published Wednesdays and Fridays, and the Chronicle, published on Tuesdays and Fridays. That was a nice little snapshot from the 1900s. Yarram's population in the 2016 census was 2,135 people, and it's the regional centre of the prosperous farming district. It's so pretty this time of year with all the autumn trees, and the beautiful colours of their leaves. The church on the left. Police station. I love their painted artwork on their walls, like that dog there. Oh, there's a department store. And the 1930s theatre. Regent's Theatre. Nice. Look at this old build. Yarrow Club 1912 Hotel. There's a nice memorial garden up here, we'll walk the dogs and then we'll head off to the next town. Yeah, heading towards Maui.
What do you think? We're just coming up on the largest brown coal-fired power station in Australia. It's uh, separated into two units, an A and a B. And the A is going to close down eventually, announced to close in the year 2035. Together they produce 50% of Victoria's electricity requirements. All six boilers are of the four circulation tower type and are made by the International Combustion Australia. Steam is supplied at pressure from a temperature of 540 degrees centigrade. This is also the site of the mainland connection point for the electricity connection cable across Bass Strait to Tasmania. The site employs about 1,200 people from the district. Loyang A power station generates approximately 30% of Victoria's requirements and produces enough power to supply over 2 million homes every year. The first power station started construction in 1984 and was completed in 1988. Just turning in here to the Jack Vines lookout to have a look at this opal cut mine. The mine was owned and operated by the State Government of Victoria until it was acquired by AGL in 2012. It's the largest brown coal mine in Australia and outputs in excess of 30 million tonnes of coal every year. This equates to 3,600 tonnes of coal per hour.
and it has four giant bucket wheel excavators called dredges that operate 24 hours a day in the open cut mine and they feed coal directly to the boilers via conveyor belts. It has an 18 hour reserve supply of 70,000 tonnes in a coal bunker. The mine is 200 metres or about 700 feet deep and it has a length of about 5 kilometres or 3 miles. The site is one of the lowest cost and most reliable generators feeding into the national electricity market for Australia. just heading into Maui. It's got an interesting industry history in the Latrobe Valley with uh, brown coal deposits and gold that was discovered here in 1852. Also has a large dairy industry and it's a good stepping off point to Mount Borbor and the Great Dividing Range which is 45 kilometres north of the town and that's a great spot for snow sports and skiing.
let's have a look at the population information on the city of Maui. The 2011 census had 15,292 people residing in Maui, which was declared a city in leaving Maui now, which is about 130 k's from the city of Melbourne, and we're heading to Trafalgar.
we're standing at 800 looking up the range Alan Schrader Alan Schrader used to shoot here Trafalgar was established in the 1860s and named after the famous Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 when the British defeated the French and Spanish fleets. It's surrounded by potato growing and a large dairy industry and was noted for a cheese factory which had award winning cheeses through the 1960s until its closure in 1990. Well, here's the famous Hog Museum that's situated here in Trafalgar, and I uh, understand it was opened in 2014. It's located in the old dairy factory that we talked about before. James Hogg. many interesting exhibits including a Holden made Melbourne tram, a Holden built patrol boat and a huge range of cars from the Holden body Buicks to the last ZB Commodore. If you love Holden cars or just interested in the Holden history this is the place to visit. Alright, that's the Holden Museum. So it's called Streslecky Reality because Maui and Trafalgar sit at the foothills just north of the Streslecky Ranges. Oh right, cool. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, it helps us with our channel.